I'd like to introduce uh, our next speaker, who is Sergeant Laura Gibson. She's a police sergeant within Police Scotland. She's currently seconded to the Scottish government working on their suicide prevention action plan. And uh, Sergeant Gibson is also a Churchill Fellow where her research interest is police well-being and resilience. And today we have the pleasure of Sergeant Gibson speaking to us about mental health stigma in policing. And so Sergeant Gibson, you have the floor. Hi everyone. Hopefully you can hear me speak. Yeah, good. Um, so I've not gone down the, the route of slide sharing because it just filled me with stress and I would be back there. So I'm going to tell you something about my own experience of dealing with mental health stigma and some reflections on that. So when I first mentioned to my husband, who's a serving police officer, that I was going to tell my story of living with mental ill health, he claimed that it was career suicide. <laughs> and how ironic that only the year previously and unknown to him that I had seriously considered taking my own life. I could not have cared about career aspirations at that point. I was in a dark place. Whether I actually did not care whether I lived or died. And the research tells us that police find it significantly more difficult to seek professional help because of the stigma surrounding mental ill health. Our culture is just to get on with it. That old adage of dry your eyes. The worry that you'll be subject to office gossip, fears about confidentiality, and a negative impact on any career prospects only compounds the silence. However, despite my husband's misgivings, I did tell my story to a packed audience of new recruits at the Scottish Police College. And since that point, I have never looked back. I may not have climbed the ranks, but I have achieved so much more success in my life and an understanding of what is truly important. The esteemed author, Matt Haig, recently stated, mental illness is not a confession, a secret, an insult, a scandal, or something that should be talked about in hushed tones. We should talk about it openly, brazenly, honestly, fearlessly. The truth not only sets us free, it also decreases stigma and saves lives. Mental health isn't as much of a taboo subject as it used to be, but there is still a long way to go. It's still a topic which makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable. Our own mental health is something we would rather not talk about. And you would have to be exceptionally brave to talk about such personal matters in a stalwart organisation such as the police. And sadly, stigma can prevent some asking for help when they most need it. Excuse me. I have been diagnosed with high functioning anxiety for about 15 years now and likely endured it for most of my adult life. And for those who understand anxiety a little, will know that some of those major symptoms include low mood, worry, poor self-esteem, paranoia, and as Dr. Seligman discussed yesterday, my all-time favorite, catastrophizing. And I suppose that was the turning point for me. For someone who used to agonize over the worst case scenario, over the most ridiculous set of circumstances, what actually was the worst that could happen if I shared my story? The likelihood was that the worst had already happened. So rather perversely, why worry about it? One of the most notable things we have seen in society, which has made the biggest difference in reducing stigma surrounding this topic, was other people sharing their personal stories of their struggles and overcoming mental ill health. Whether that's been business leaders, celebrities, and even our own royal family speaking out about their mental health struggles. It has been proved that anyone can experience poor mental health. After all, mental illness does not discriminate. 
It's helpful to remember that storytelling is one of the oldest art forms of civilization. It entertains, it educates people by reflecting on experience, and it also creates a sense of community. Sharing our stories of mental ill health and recovery can empower and heal by eradicating societal stigma and shame. And what we know is that being able to connect with others through their personal accounts, seeing others accepting their experiences and being comfortable to talk openly can help reinforce that mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. Talking openly about a personal experience of a mental health condition is one of the most powerful things you can do. And when sharing a story with an organization such as law enforcement or the police, I am never surprised by how many colleagues have also experienced a similar difficulty or are supporting a loved one who is. What we can guarantee is that courage is contagious. And by others, sorry, and by normalizing these conversations helps to change negative attitudes and stereotypes. In particular, sharing your story can make you someone else's source of inspiration and a reminder that you're not alone. It can show that people can continue to work and manage mental health conditions. It's actually not career ending. It encourages others to speak openly about their experience of mental ill health. It can help others experiencing poor mental health to take the brave step of taking action and seeking support. And for those lucky enough not to have experienced mental ill health, it can educate. It can challenge misconceptions and provide a better understanding of some of the challenges of living with the illness. It can also encourage the organisation to take notice and to make workplace mental wellbeing a priority. And for those who have perhaps participated in negative treatment of others because of mental ill health, whether that was inadvertently or not, it makes them shift in their seat uncomfortably. Consider the impact of their actions and hopefully remedy past behaviours. There is nothing better than a bit of shame to encourage changing of attitudes. It's important for people living with mental ill health to know that they are not alone. Stigma encourages loneliness. And by sharing your experience and reassuring others that they are not the only ones to feel like this is hugely reassuring. And for many, can be the first step to recovery. Talking about your own mental health journey isn't just helpful for others, it's actually good for you too. Sharing your story can be hugely liberating it can help you find your voice, reaffirm your values, make sense of what has happened in your life and start that journey of building resilience. Telling the world or even one person about what you have been through and overcome can help you re-establish control and reflect on what worked in your recovery and what didn't. If you have found the strength to talk about your mental ill health, then it is likely that you're in a place where you're strong enough to manage it. For me, it's hugely setting a lot. It allowed, it allowed me to make sense of the chaos and align my story to a beginning, a middle and an end. Resilience is strengthened by recognising that we are all experts in our own lives. By sharing your story, it allows you to take stock and clarify what is important. Pausing to share your recovery narrative can be a good reminder of your priorities. Taking the time to focus on your values is hugely beneficial too. P 
people who have found their voice, mustered up the courage to share their story and reaffirm their values, often find a sense of peace at last, of hope that they did not have before. Our own emotional resilience and capacity to cope are strengthened when we realised we have the wisdom and strength to make a difference. And as I've, I have highlighted, sharing your story is hugely rewarding. But there are Sergeant Gibson, I, Sergeant Gibson, I just want to just let you know we're at the two minute mark. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So as I've highlighted, sharing your story is hugely rewarding, but there are significant factors to consider before you do so. A number of mental health organisations, for example, Way Ahead, a mental health charity in Australia, or our own CME in Scotland, provide some simple guidance on telling your own story how to do this safely and ethically. Firstly, and most importantly, decide if you're emotionally and mentally ready to speak. This includes considering why you want to share your story. Is it to inform and educate others? Will your story include other people? Do you need to seek their permission prior to telling their story? It is always best to think about your boundaries prior to telling your story. There may be aspects of your story that you wish to keep private. Telling your story may be an emotional experience as you revisit past experience. It is important to ensure you have a support system in place to deal with any issues which may arise during and after the storytelling process. And keep in mind who you're sharing the story with. You do not know who will be your audience and how they are feeling. So care is needed when talking about to uh, topics such as suicide or self-harm. And above all, remember that telling your story does not replace seeking help. And to finish off, through our Police Scotland wellbeing programme, we are trying to create opportunities for our officers and staff to be more open and to support one another in an effort to tackle stigma whether it's been educating our staff through mental health first aid training, providing peer support with our wellbeing champions, or sharing stories of lived experience and recovery, which are now on our wellbeing app. I've got a final statement. We've made initial steps, but still have so much further to go. Please don't underestimate the power of sharing your story. Having a mental illness has been a defining experience in my life which has had a deep and lasting impact on the people it has touched. It would be unbearable to think that my experience had no meaning, that it would be lost without the chance to help others. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sergeant Gibson. Thank you very much for your strength and your courage in sharing that with us.